Unique has done the impossible. They've brought together the internet around one general agreement, and that is that the factory charger for these Typhoon G or Typhoon Q500 batteries is a horrible, horrible charger. So, in reading that, and you know, again, shock that everyone seemed to agree on something, I decided, uh, well, not a problem, I have another charger. I've got this old Tenergy balancing LiPo charger that I've used for a few years for some different hobby batteries. I used that to charge this battery. It took six hours. So that told me that this is too low of an output. I need to find something else. So I got online, started looking around, found some Venom chargers. Then I came across this. This is an EV Peak charger specifically made to charge two of these batteries at the same time. These are normally around 100 to 110 bucks online. I got this one for more than half off. So I decided I'll give it a look and see if it actually works. Before we get into the box, just a quick look at the front. Mention that it is a dedicated balance charger for this Q500. Some other information if you want to read it. And then there's just logos and then a little warning on the back. So let's get it opened up. First, we have our instructions. Very basic. I mean, you know, this is an easy to operate charger. By the way, there's a company named Venom and a few others that use this rough exact same design. The reason that I bought this design is because here it shows the screen. You can see the actual charge time and where the, each of the batteries are. Not only that, but it'll show what their capacity is. So in theory, you'll be able to see when a battery's starting to wear out. So it wouldn't charge with a high, as high of a capacity as it normally would. And this just has battery cable. No. Charger. It's a little weighty. Weighs, huh? I almost dropped it. Weighs, uh, you know, it's not heavy, but it's not light. So it definitely feels like something. Here, EV Peak. And okay, here we go. It's like the charge current, six amps per channel, and the balance current is 400 milliamps. Okay, well, it supports both LiPo battery. I, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. But this is the charger. Very nice. Again, you know, pretty weighty. And it's got some little, these two screens here. So you've got little screen protectors on it. There is a port for our batteries. So you can just slide in two batteries. Now these unique, this is an aftermarket. And you can see it slides in and out pretty easy. This one I actually have to put just a little bit of pressure on. These unique casings are a little thicker than these and I know this looks scuffed up I've only used this once I just sliding into the drone that one time did that but you just slide this in but another cool thing about this charger is not only can you charge two bay you can charge one battery or you can charge both at the same time you can also plug up your transmitter USB charge cable and charge your transmitter battery while you're charging two batteries and these batteries do not have to be the same milliamp hour so, you know, they make these, I think it's 6,300 milliamp hour upgraded batteries for the Q500. You can charge one of those at the same time that you're charging the factory battery. So, really, really nice. Okay, so let me get the charger set up. I'm probably only going to charge one battery. I'm going to do my first flight with the new Q500 that I just purchased. My previous videos, you know, I've had the Typhoon G. Uh, so, I may only charge one right now for this video, but I'll show you you know, the LCD, how that works, and more importantly, show you where I charge LiPo batteries, because as you can know, they can be dangerous. It's been quite a few weeks since I made the first half of this video, so I decided I would finish it up. And as I ended the unboxing section, I talked about where I charge the batteries, you know, because these LiPo batteries can be a little volatile sometimes when charging. Well, instead of having a LiPo sack or anything like that, I just put them in my fireplace. I have an arrest screen here that I can close. And I have some glass doors that I can shut to totally seal it up. So if something were to happen, well, it just goes up and out. Perfectly safe. 
So now that I've shown that, let me give you an overview of the charger. All right, I have the batteries in. I actually failed to press record earlier when I showed that these just say idle when you don't have the batteries in. And I also mentioned that the unique branded battery, I tend to put on the right side of this charger because it, I don't know if the housing's just a little thicker than this aftermarket branded one or what, but it tends to work out better putting it in and out on the right hand side. But putting them in, I mentioned that you need to, you slide these in, you get them kind of close, and then you put some force on it. You don't just jam it in because I don't want to break anything here. Just kind of push it till it meets up. And it'll show the MAH and the voltage of the battery, or excuse me, it'll show you the percentage and then the voltages of the cells and it'll say idle. And then after about 10 or 20 seconds, it'll change over to charge and it starts applying charge. And what this does, this shows you how many milliamp hours that it is adding to the battery as well as the charge percentages as it goes along and then the cells and then you'll see at the end, at 99%, I don't know if I'll come back for this, but at 99%, it'll start balancing the cells. And then it'll be a full charge, and it'll show you how long it took to complete the charge. So we'll let this run, and I'll come back when they're full. We'll see what it applied to each of these and see that it balanced out the cells, and then I'll discuss getting them out. That's something important. But uh, also the fan. I don't know. Let me get close. I don't know if you can hear anything, but you can barely hear this thing run. It's very, very quiet. And it also has, as I mentioned in the unboxing, it has a USB port here that I can plug the USB port for the charger or for the transmitter. And then I could take my transmitter and I could plug in with the USB, but I'm not going to because my transmitter is actually still charged. One good charge on the transmitter will last a few flights. So anyway, let this thing charge and then we'll come back, look at the status of it and talk about getting the batteries out. Here we are fully charged. It took, uh, well, both of them right at 49 minutes, almost 50 minutes. You see, put almost the same amount of MAH in them, milliamp hours. Now, this is the one downside that I find to this charger. It gets better over time, but it's still difficult and that is getting them out. I mean, you really got to really grip and pull. Feels like you're gonna break something when you yank them out. It's getting better, but the first few times that I charged, it was, I, mean, I didn't think I was gonna get them out. It was very difficult. Oh, and by the way, there shows you what it looks like when it's idle. But that is the function and charging of this charger. Works well. Charged up these two batteries from, had them at right at 60%. Charge them in 49 minutes to a full charge. Now I'm going to go fly them and have some fun. Thanks for watching. Everyone have a great day.